Hey guys, welcome to Wrench to Drive. In this video, we're going to take a look at this uh, 3D printing pen. It's a cheapo. Got it for about uh, 20 bucks Canadian, so about 15 bucks US. Is this an indispensable tool or a pointless piece of junk? That is the question. Uh, I'm going to say somewhere in between, guys. A good 3D printing pen, something that works really well and is uh, is super reliable, guys. I think would be a very very handy tool. This particular 3D printing pen. Eh, a little dodgy guys, a little dodgy. The quality is not the greatest. Uh, when you crack it open, it's actually it's actually pretty impressive guys. It's kind of a, a neat piece of engineering, but uh, the problem is it's not super reliable. Biggest thing, if you're looking at this for, uh, for children, I would be very, very cautious guys. I think it depends entirely on how, how savvy your kids are, but it is, uh, it is a bit of an adventure. And the biggest thing to, uh, to teach your kids, guys, if you get, let your kid play with one of these things, okay, is uh, this is a corded unit, guys. It's not cordless. Okay, if it, if it starts doing weird stuff, if the plastic gets too hot or if the feeder gets stuck or whatever, the most important thing to teach your kids, pull the plug. Once you pull the plug, your problems are going to go away very, very quickly, guys. But uh, you're going to have to do that with this particular unit, guys. And we'll see if it actually, if it actually shows its, uh, its evil characteristics while I'm trying to make this video. But uh, I suspect it will because it's, it's not super reliable, guys. It, uh, it's prone to the feeder running amok. It's prone to, uh, to nozzle jams. If you're, uh, if, you're not, uh, if you're not quick enough doing what you want to be doing, it's very, very prone to nozzle jams. The, uh, the hot end here, this, this actually pushed off at one point because the nozzle was so plugged and the motor had enough jam to push the, the filament hard enough to actually pop the whole front end off, guys. And all this is, this is a plastic uh, protective cover and inside there there's a heating element that plugs into a little, uh, a little orifice here. And um, what you notice right away when you, when you start poking around with this thing, guys, is, is it's pretty well engineered, but... Ah, pretty much everything about it is not super reliable, guys. So, so it is what it is. But I'm going to show you what what to me it's very very useful for, guys. And and uh, you know for the kids playing around, um, you know modeling up little things, draw kind of drawing little things, doodling with it. Eh, okay, sort of usable, guys. To me, what it is super super usable for is repairing damage, guys. And this red filament here, that this uh, this is a transmission mount for a 3D crawler guy, or for a for an RC crawler guys, and uh, and this red plastic is really really brittle guys. It's uh, it's Solutech PLA, and Solutech PLA is really really prone to you get a bad roll and it's brittle, breaks really easily guys. And as you can see, there's a crack right there guys. Let's see if I can get a good angle on it. Yeah, there we go. There's a crack right there guys. And there's these spots where there's orange plastic, guys, there was previous cracks. And I have, I have already fixed this multiple times. And uh, I did it on the car for these other fixes, guys. For this one, I'm going to do it off the car. And I'm going to show you what I've been doing. And it actually works pretty well, guys. This handy-dandy uh, rotary tool has a milling bit in it, guys. So this is a bit that's used for machining parts guys so metal plastic whatever it works really well on plastic these bits last a long time if you're just uh, grinding away on plastic so we're going to use this milling bit i'm going to auger out this crack guys so that there's a uh, so that there's a uh, some more exposed surface and then i'm going to put in some uh, some plastic with the 3d printing pen to uh, to fix it up guys so first things first we got to auger out some plastic so I'm gonna probably turn the sound down here so you don't have to tolerate the uh, the screeching but uh, this is step one you auger out some plastic to give yourself some purchase to make your repair Alright, so that didn't work super well, as you can see. We got a little bit of buildup on the uh, on the milling bit. This is uh, this is a common problem, guys. You get some buildup on the milling bit, and then you got to get it off. 
it's not super hard guys what I'm gonna do actually is uh, switch over to another bit that's gonna work a little bit better because I didn't get enough of that material off of there guys all right guys so I switched to one of these little sanding drums here these work pretty well as well Alright, so there we go. Good enough, guys. So as you can see, I've got a groove dug. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild this with fresh plastic, guys, using the 3D printing pen. Now, obviously, this is not holding up very well, as you might have seen as I was uh, machining there. This, there's another crack in here. I'm going to build up another layer of, uh, of plastic over top of this and, uh, try and uh, try and get a little more life out of this part, guys. And keep in mind that uh, as we're going through this, guys, that the problem is that this red plastic is really, really brittle, guys. So this is not a fundamental problem with the part. This is a fundamental problem with the plastic, guys. I've made uh, quite a few uh, transmission mounts, uh, center center sections, guys, these, uh, these center uh, braces for uh, crawlers, and they're really durable, guys. This particular plastic is, uh, is really weak. So it's brittle. It just it uh, load and it, uh, it it snaps really really easily, guys. So with this 3D printing pen, you pu you plug it in, you uh, hit the arrow once and to set your material. And I set it to PLA, and it's going to heat to 195. And you can change the temperature that it's going to heat to using these arrow buttons here. And I'm going to set it to 200. Try that out. And then we'll let it heat up. Doesn't take very long. I'll speed through this. Now, one of the problems with this pen, guys, is that what I've found is the plastic is either flowing too fast or too slow. It's kind of really, it's hard to get the, a nice setting where you're getting the, the plastic coming out at the, at the speed that you want, guys. All the way down is really slow. All the way up is really fast. So I'm going to set it uh, to a fairly f fast rate of, uh, of extrusion, and we're going to give this a try here. And once it's ready to go, switches to green. They see that green LED there? It's at 200. So let's give her a, let's give her a go, guys. Okay, we got some plastic coming out, and you got to be careful, guys. It kind of tends to build up on the head, it makes a bit of a mess. Yeah, you can see it's getting a little out of hand already, guys. Now what you want to do if you're repairing is get it really hot right next to the surface of the old plastic so it bonds well. And I'm not too worried about how this looks because I'm going to grind it off and smooth it out. And there it's stuck guys, it's just feeding merrily away so I'm just going to try and get my work done and then turn it off. And I want to put a little more up here. That is the problem with this, guys. It's not very reliable. Alright, and then you pull the plug out, problem solved. As you can see though guys, not very reliable. Alright, now, alright, we got a kind of a cancerous growth looking thing going there guys, but now once this cools off, what we can do, and it's getting there already, is grind off the excess with our handy dandy tool, and in theory this part is now still usable yeah and you can see right here when I pry on this I didn't get very good adhesion to the part guys and up there it doesn't matter too much hopefully that did not happen down below because down below is where I wanted to do the fix 
you're feeling, right? So we might as well cut this off because it's loose. Yeah, that didn't bond very well. At least not right there. Alright, so I'm going to try another little one here, guys. Now one of the things that you'll notice, guys, is when you grind out the material with the rotary tool, you actually do uh, melt the plastic and get some better adhesion in places, guys. So you're doing, you're, you're actually getting some repair just by by grinding and heating, and hopefully a little bit more when we lay a new bead in there. All right. So that's not looking too bad. So we'll try running another bead in here and hopefully get a little more strength in there. Alright guys, so I've got another strip of plastic at the ready. Because I'm going to run out probably before I'm done with this. This time I'm going to try going a little bit slower and we'll try to get a better, a better repair guys. It's an adventure. This is a uh, this is not a very useful uh, or not a very high quality tool, guys. It is a pain in the butt to work with. So keep that in mind. Uh, now I don't know. Hopefully, if you buy a nice one, it's going to be a little bit better, right? But uh, all I've got is this twenty dollar one. So so it is what it is. We'll deal with it. Alright, so I'm going to go way slower this time, guys. And the problem with this is that it only really has fast and slow. There's not a whole lot of in-between. So you can hear it there. It's barely just kind of chunking away. And I'm going to keep the, the nozzle. And it's stuck again. The trouble is if you hit reverse, guys, it it, uh, it uh, spits the plastic back out the other end. So you can, once you're, you're going, you kind of have to keep going. So hopefully you can see it's getting nice and hot in there, guys. So this repair is going to work much better than that last one did. 100%. Takes a bit of fiddling to get the hang of this, guys. Don't burn yourself. I just touched the end there and it is dreadfully warm. Oh, I think I'm out of plastic. Yeah, so that, uh, it didn't like that feed, so I just started feeding it again, guys. And now we got plastic coming out, so we'll turn the speed down. And I made a mess. It's an adventure, guys. It's an adventure. Oh, I see. Apparently, when it starts going fast, sometimes it will indeed shut off when you push the, uh, the feed button again. It's an adventure, guys. This thing is uh, is far from super reliable, but maybe that's a feature I didn't realize existed. Oh, I see. You double tap and it goes continuously, and then you press it again and it turns off. Interesting. Okay, I did not know it did that. That was not documented, guys. problem with this if you don't know what you're doing is when it runs amok you kind of you get a little panicky even if even if you're uh, even if you're an old timer who should know better so the trick I'm showing you here you get the nozzle in there and you can really heat it up and get a nice bond but the plastic can't be going too fast right Oops. 
So you notice I'm getting this nice and hot, guys. And the only thing you have to be careful of is when you don't feed plastic for too long, you get jams. You get nozzle jams, guys. Pain in the butt. Sorry guys, some of this video is probably not going to be the greatest. It's very difficult to actually work and tape it or in a film at the same time. As we can see here guys, we got this lumpy brainy texture here, but this should be a pretty solid repair because this time I got it nice and hot. So what I'm going to do now is grind a little bit more and see if it indeed is as durable as it looks. And that is not feeling super hot. Alright guys, so that's a technique I'm going to call drum rolling, where you, you roll the drum along the plastic and you let it get nice and warm, and it actually peels off a layer of plastic and uh, kind of rolls it up as you, as you work. Very handy. And as you can see, I think I actually succeeded in fixing it this time. All right, now one of the things you're going to want to do if you're fixing something where there's a hole like this, you re-drill the hole, make sure that it's not too small because uh, when the plastic's brittle, if you try to run a screw into a hole that's too small, you're going to have a problem, right? So anyways, that is kind of how you use this thing, guys, and it takes some practice, as you can see. Far from perfect, far from pretty. It is what it is, and this little tool lets me reuse this prototype to get some more miles out of it so that it doesn't just go straight into the uh, into the recycle which uh, eh, once you once you use stuff guys does it actually get recycled it's a big question mark right so you don't want to waste any more than you have to but uh, that's that's my intro to this handy dandy tool guys this 3d printing pen so to me a good one that works really really well which actually I, I might have to change my opinion guys so so remember Give this sub button a tap if you need to stop it and maybe that'll stop a runaway feed jam I, I could swear I had tried that guys and this thing had indeed run amok on me, but maybe I'm wrong Maybe I panicked. Maybe I was just getting carried away as you can see That's part of the reason why I don't totally recommend this for kids guys. It's uh, It's a bit of an adventure and the one time I had a nozzle jam it uh, like I said it pushed It pushed the nozzle right out of the pen guys and this, this hot end, this is hot, guys. So if, a, if it happened to a little kid and they grabbed it, they're going to get burned, right? So, ah, it's a mediocre tool, guys. 20 bucks is hard to go wrong, and it does let you fix parts, but I, I cannot give this a glowing endorsement, guys. It's, um, yeah, what can I say? 5 out of 10. It's useful, but how useful? That's a big question mark. So as I use it more, um, if, it, if it ends up being, uh, being reasonably useful, I will keep you posted. But uh, that's it for now. That's a 3D printing edition of uh, Wrench to Drive, where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive? See you next time.